Alrighty. Hey everybody, Frankie Slauson here, and I'm uh, with a, a, an old friend of mine who uh, a long time ago, uh, kind of like with the Mike Massey interview, I interviewed him way back in 2006 uh, when he was doing stuff in Raleigh, North Carolina, uh, for I, I believe uh, you had your own show in Raleigh. Yep, that's correct. I know you made me feel old now with uh, 2006. I can't believe how much time by. Yeah, it's pretty uh, pretty crazy. But right now, uh, you're at you you moved to Atlanta, Georgia, and the the man who I'm speaking to is a guy by the name of TV, or Timmy D. Now he might not sound familiar to any of you, but uh, he's a he's a busy guy. That's for sure. Yeah, definitely. I always seem to stay busy. I actually uh, moved to Atlanta, Georgia. And, and I always like to tell everyone, you know, my name is Tim Letter E. Period D, and if you're my friend, then you already know that. <laughs> so see, they may already be aware, and they, we just might not know that they are aware of exactly what I am all about. But just in case there is that one lone regular out there who isn't, uh, you know, on board yet with the Timmy D experience, I moved to Atlanta, Georgia to do um, play, well, actually, first, before I did the play by play, I actually did a national cable channel. And I worked with them for a little while, but mainly I always still had my eye on professional wrestling because I had done some in North Carolina. And when I got the chance to move here, heard so much about, at the time, was called NWA Anarchy. And, you know, just kept really trying to, to get my way in the door as best as that I could. And got, kind of started out with them with ring announcing, but I'd always had my eye on play-by-play. -play. And I guess what we have, uh, the opportunity arose where someone was leaving, and then I was able to do kind of fill-in. Um, and then from there, you know, the color commentating. And then the wonderful opportunity, I guess, in a way, or the, one of the people left. Not that it's wonderful that they left because they, they taught me so much, which was John Johnson. But I guess wonderful in the sense that, I guess, presented me. Now I was the senior announcer, which I'd only been there for two years. But, yeah, John Johnson definitely taught me a lot, lot and I miss working with him. And he was really instrumental in getting me me in. And, um, I mean, you know, I guess that's how the business goes. The business continues on. When people leave, which even though we missed the person, yeah, the show got must go on like the the old cliche goes, I guess. Huh? <laughs> yes, exactly. I know. What have you been up to? I know this is an interview really for me, but I'm you know always nice to hear. I know you're always a busy guy, always doing interviews and stuff like that. And I've always enjoyed your work and, and stuff that you've done. Well, I appreciate that. You know, I mean, I'm, I'm nobody, I'm nobody famous, but I, you know, I just been doing interviews with random celebrities or just up and comers. You know, anyway. My, my thing is, anybody that's in the entertainment business is somebody who I want to talk to. And I don't care if they're a multi-millionaire or somebody who's, uh, you know, just getting into the business, uh, whether it's uh, whatever profession, it really don't matter as long as it relates to entertainment. And I'm the guy that I like to talk to whoever does something that relates with entertainment. And as I was telling you before I uh, we hit record on here, I, for for those of you who are wondering uh, why this is just an audio format, well, I finally uh, finally got the nerve to get a, a sound recorder for my interview. So, because I got a few uh, people that uh, commented before that they they didn't like the shakiness of the camera. So, you know, <laughs> I love the shakiness. It always makes me feel like I'm back in Los Angeles during earthquake time. Yeah, I was able to survive. Well, I I just. You know, I upgraded my uh, software on my computer here to uh, Windows 7 Ultimate, and it included a free sound recorder. And I was always trying to figure out why, because I was trying to figure out why I couldn't record the audio from, like, just whatever I was playing or whatever I was, you know, whatever I was doing. I could record my voice, but I couldn't record the audio uh, beforehand. And then I figured it out. I didn't have the stereo mixer on. <laughs> That's why it wouldn't work. I just, like... Wouldn't it automatically come on? But I, I figured that out, and, and now uh, everything's working just fine. So from now on, any interview that I do, unless I'm talking to, like, John Cena or somebody, then and it's a video interview, then I will uh, use whip out the camera again or something. But, but anyway. Right, exactly. Other than that, we'll keep it in the box for the time. Yeah. Being. I mean, you know, and I, you know, I got Skype monthly things, so that I can call anybody, you know, it makes it sound like I'm calling from a regular cell phone, but I'm not. It's all through the Internet, so thank God for the Internet. So other than that, I haven't been... Really no, no, go ahead. Smoke and mirrors. Yeah, no smoke and mirrors. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, so tonight, we're just going to discuss, uh, basically, pro wrestling. Uh, and you, uh, you saw my last video on YouTube or Facebook? 
that got you interested in doing this? Yeah, I think so. Well, that, and actually, you know, it's funny to also give a little plug out. One, one of the things I think that it was was that you did have Mike Massey on, on for one of your interviews, and I remember how much fun that was when me and Mike, I was at Mike's house, and then, uh, you know, we talked to you, you know, via, for your show. Uh -huh. And uh, Mike, I haven't seen Mike in a long time, um, but we, we do talk every now and again, and he's always a great guy, and I was glad that he was on your show. And I always appreciate, you know, what all he's been able to do off and on for me, and, um, you know, we help each other out. and. Oh, yeah. yeah, he's a great guy, and if you haven't checked out the interview, if it's still posted uh, with you, then I would certainly encourage everyone to check it out. Yeah, yeah, it's actually, uh, besides you and then the, the uh, three indie wrestlers I interviewed last week at the R&R uh, &R Wrestling that Buck Zumoff had at Greenbush, uh, he, he's actually the last person I actually interviewed uh, before I kind of took a little bit of a break. Wow, how about that? <laughs> Well, yeah, I love talking wrestling. You're absolutely right. And I know that's one of the things that you and I definitely have in common is, is wrestling. And um, Anarchy uh, Pro Wrestling is, who, again, who I work for. And the internet, the website is actually anarchy-wrestling.net. We used to be NWA affiliated, but they dropped the NWA banner, and now we're just Anarchy. So, which I guess is okay. part of the commentator because you have to drop the, uh, the, the thing that you've been programmed to say for years. So uh, why did they drop the NWA name? I'm always the last to know anything. I'm, I'm usually like, oh, yeah, I'm, I'm supposed to be here this week? Okay. I, it, I Really, I think it's just a lot of behind-the-scenes stuff that, you know, I'm probably not aware of. Okay. And, and maybe one of them, too, is I know they have to pay, like, some type of licensing fee, I think, each year or something to that effect, and maybe they just don't want to pay the dues. And, you know, I know there were some other, like, NWA was kind of being embroiled with, I guess, some controversy going on with some of the members. So I don't know if that has something to do with huh. it or not. I just know. We came in for one show and said, well, we're no longer this, and, yeah. you know, don't say it. And I was like, okay. Well, that's kind of that's kind of funny because uh, it reminded me, you remember when TNA first started out? Whatever it was that's called. NWA TNA. NWA TNA. And then uh, I think the thing was that they were, like, contracted, you know, with the NWA, you know, with the NWA and whatever so they could have the titles and the championship before it finally became TNA Wrestling. So... Right, and I don't. Remember yeah, and I, I know Bill Barron's had a big, uh, you know, hand in working in there and assisting with a lot of the talent at TNA, and he still does. And he's one of our, you know, primary leaders uh, oh. that works at Anarchy. So we always put on a really good, great show from him, and I yeah, appreciate all his knowledge that he's been able to expound upon for me. Um, but yeah, he's definitely been very instrumental with the TNA at the beginning stages, and I'm sure for you, for being a, a fan, and and being able to remember that it was NWA TNA, <laughs> I'm sure you've seen that promotion really grow over the years oh yeah uh, and, and it's funny that you bring that up or actually i brought it up or you, you brought it up too uh because uh as p some people know and i mentioned this uh, beforehand uh, uh a while ago that uh this friday uh in bemidji uh that's only like three hours from where i live uh they're having a live event from tna uh, with uh, a promotion for impact wrestling uh live uh, at the Sanford Center in Bemidji, and I'm going to be going to that, so it should be a lot of fun. Wow, that's awesome. Have you done uh, any other shows for t uh, with TNA? Like, have you actually gone to, to watch any of them before? Uh, the yeah, uh, about a year and a half ago, I actually went for my first time ever uh, when I was living in Thief River. Uh, I went to a town called Grand Forks, North Dakota, which is only like, you know, about an hour away from, about an hour, hour and a half away from where I live now. Uh, at the Alaris Center, and that was that was pretty awesome. I mean, I got to meet Jeff Jarrett, Kurt Angle. Uh, geez, uh, back in the day where it was like Ink Ink, and uh, uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, there was there was a lot of it was uh, a lot of fun. Uh, this time they got AJ Styles finally coming, Jeff Hardy's coming, uh, Bobby Roode, and uh, James Storm is coming. So. Yeah, it should be. Uh... Oh, you, know, you know what's interesting about that? Whenever they do their leg here in Georgia, they always uh, definitely put AJ Styles on because you know, he's from here. And then the other cool thing is he actually wrestled for Anarchy for a while up in Cornelia, Georgia. And um, so that was kind of cool as our claims to fame of oh, people cool. that we've had in our promotion, as well as uh, Ron Killings, of course, R Truth. Sure. Had uh, Consequences Creed. So, yeah, several people have gone on to go to either TNA or WWE. Yeah. So it's yep. kind of cool to. Yeah, that. so what do you think now? Uh, I mean, let's kind of go back, like like probably eleven years ago, when when WCW finally uh, went under WWF uh, or WWE now uh, bought WCW. What do you think life would have been like if WCW would have uh, been around still? 
Well, I know one thing for sure. Now that I live in Atlanta, Georgia, I would be probably visiting at least once a week and sending out my resume. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, of course, I love anarchy, but, I mean, I grew up watching WCW and, and of course, being in the South. And I actually got a chance to come down and visit one time when they were still in business and they had in the CNN Center where they had their production offices. And at the time, you could actually kind of walk behind and see it and look through the glass, and that was really cool. Huh. And um, now, you know, they it's a restricted area, and of course, as you mentioned, WCW not around anymore uh, under the WWE umbrella, or at least the, the rights to the name anyway. Yeah. But yeah, I always like to know what would have happened. Um, you know, I always think of that once in a while, too, when I watch some old school stuff. As a matter of fact, a couple of days ago, I rewatched the uh, Best of Starcade from WWE they put out. Oh, like, yeah, yeah, I got that compilation, too. That's a pretty good compilation, yeah, and it always just makes me kind of sad because I feel like, you know, there was that one moment where I know Bischoff tried to put together funding with, uh, I think it's, no, I'm thinking of TNA with Pan Energy, but <laughs> some other group of people that, uh, you know, worked with them to try and get, you know, WCW, and instead it just went to, to Vince, and I always think that was sad because I definitely think competition is great, and, you know, and I admire, some think it was kind of crazy maybe that TNA did go against WWE on a Monday for a while, but yeah. on one hand, I admire it. I just think they weren't big enough yet. Because if you remember, you know, when WCW went and, and took on WWE uh, on Monday, Certainly at that do. point, yeah, they were really like, you know, they had they started getting that talent. They had a Hulk Hogan and Randy Savage, and, and then they were also on the cusp of really coming up with some really good storylines. So they really didn't have much to lose, but they had built up enough. The problem is, you know, I don't know what it would take for TNA I kind of thought when they brought Hogan in and Bischoff and then they had Angle that maybe that would be enough. And I don't know. It just seems like they never really can crack much past that one point whatever rating for some reason or another. Yeah, and, and you know, it's kind of funny. You know, like uh, I was thinking about just recently uh, when that Brad Maddox uh, was the referee uh, for WWE for, uh, you know, the storyline now is now he's going to be back to being pro wrestling again. But... Uh, when he uh, was refereeing anyway, and then he uh, low blowed Ryback at Hell in a Cell, and then uh, you know came back about a week later when they were in England, I kind of thought it'd be kind of cool <clears throat> because to me, this Brad Maddox guy, even though I don't know much about him, you probably know more about him than I do, but I don't. <laughs> that he kind of looks like somebody like uh, you know like 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 the new Eric Bischoff more or less because of his persona, yeah, because of, of the way he looks, kind of the way he. It's kind of quiet and just kind of, you don't know what he's going to say. I mean, I wish they would have given him more of a push. I wish they would have let him actually beat Ryback and see what what could have happened. You know, just, you know, I, I don't know. It just, it would have been so funny if you would have came out with, even though I know they can't do this, but like some sort of parody of like the, uh, what they got, Aces and Eights now or whatever. I love their theme song. Right. If he's, He seems like the type of person that could come out to that type of theme song in a WWE venue. I don't know. I just. Well, I know the internet <laughs> wrestling community have, uh, some of them have deemed him kind of like a resemblance of Garrett Bischoff. So you're yeah. not far off with that, that analogy and assumption, and you're right. Yeah, as far as questioning, though, the, uh, the Brad Maddox Ryback thing, I think WWE's already kind of a little bit in, in some hurt in regards to pushing up Ryback so, so big. I can't even imagine, even if you had all the Nexus members, or well, I guess the, the new and approved Nexus, if you want to call it that, <laughs> yeah. um, come in, you know, and, and totally wipe the the floor would ride back and then have Brad Maddox get the pin, I feel like that would definitely not help ride back as much as they're probably in the, the scenarios that they're doing now, because, of course, with the Hell in the Cell and then Survivor Series, it's yeah. like you wonder, is this man ever going to finally be able to to unleash? And I, I feel like, I don't know what if they've set the card yet or not for a TLC, but I'm sure they're going to have probably, um, probably a rematch, Ryback taking probably. on all three of the members. Yeah. You know what, what I don't understand is, like, you know, no, ever since WWE went HD, HD especially, and nothing wrong with that because I think it's cool that they're finally you know upgrading to every, like everybody else is. But it's like when they went PG, that really kind of, as a wrestling fan who has followed WWF or WWE for so long, that kind of pisses me off a little bit because of the fact that I miss watching like the the matches that were hardcore. And even though okay. Yeah, if they bleed, you know, most of the time we all know that they have razor blades or whatever because normally you can't get a cut from a... You have to be hit in the head from a chair many, many times in order to really bleed unless it has a sharp edge. So we all know that the real wrestling fans know how they, you know, start bleeding and stuff. But I miss that. 
You know, I miss watching a cage match or, or, or a Hell in a Cell match, especially especially these, the last two, or even the one with the Undertaker and Triple H from WrestleMania. There's no blood. You know, there's no, you know, what there should be, there isn't. Why is that? Well, I know one thing, <laughs> thing that I wish was that, I mean, I said this a while back when they split both brands. I mean, it may be a crazy idea, but I figure, like, well, it can't probably hurt the this, this situation yeah. anymore. But I wish that they would do, like, raw, you know, kind of, like, more nitty-gritty, like the way they used to have, a little more edgier. Sure. And then maybe have the PG brand or a little, you know, a little bit for SmackDown. And almost maybe even go a little more cartoonish. So then, in a way, you're kind of combining two different eras. Because I, I enjoy both eras. I enjoy the Attitude Era, and I enjoyed a lot of the stuff in the 80s. Yeah. And that way, those that have kids, if you're a little more worried about more of the edgier stuff, you can take them to the... SmackDown brand, and then those you know that are the teens on up, and that also grew up on more of the Attitude Era can appreciate that. And and sure. it's on later. I would first of all, I would get rid of the three hours. I'd move it back to nine, and then that way you can be a little more edgier because it's at a nine o'clock hour. Yeah. Um, I think it, that was a huge mistake for WWE, and it's like even when they were hot pulling in, you know, six and sevens in a rating, um, that would have been pushing it to have three hours. But at least it made more sense then than to have the product which. You know, I think I haven't checked the ratings lately, but I think it was like they were in the twos range. It's like, and why in the world would you, you know, go to them three hours and continue to water the product down? Did they not learn anything from when Nitro went from two to three, and then they went from three to then adding another show on Thursdays? And yeah, you know, if you just eat steak all the time every day, <laughs> you know, throughout the week, you just kind of like want something different. Well, yeah, and that's just the thing too with the uh, Raw going three hours. Uh, you know, it's like okay, lately their matches haven't really been that great. Okay, it's like. You know, I'm sick and tired of the AJ Lee controversial thing with John Cena. Who cares? You know, I mean, who gives a shit? You know, I mean, I, I personally don't care. I mean, I, I mean, it's it's cool for a little bit, but now that they've been milking it for, for the last three or four weeks or five weeks or whatever, it's like, I don't know. It's, uh, but then it's like they got all these. Uh, I mean, at first, you know, when they went three hours, I thought, okay, that'll be great for some of the talent that doesn't normally get a chance to wrestle. On Raw to have a, right. to have a good match, but lately a lot of these matches, like I watched that match between the, the Great Kali last week and uh, uh, who was it, Primo and Epico. It was like a handicap mm -hmm. match. That match was horrible. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you yeah, watched exactly. that. I, know, I thought the same thing. I thought when they went to three hours, I'm like, well, maybe they're gonna. I mean, I, there was the rumor going around that they were gonna try and do a little more, you know, something different with the first hour. And I thought, well, you know, if they change it up a little bit and then that way you feel like you're kind of getting a bonus or a different type of show and then a clock you kind of took over with the way you know raw had been then then i guess it would have made a little more sense but you're right they it really it basically is just a watered down version of three hours stretched out instead of putting your best stuff in a short amount of time they stretch it out now i did actually like last week so i thought the way they did with the whole Cena thing, and I also thought with the AJ, I agree, you know, they've played it out forever, but I actually thought it was a lot more advancement, at least let's go around, and, well, hey, making out with AJ uh, was certainly <laughs> a nice little fantasy on my head for that Oh, moment. sure. Oh, sh oh, yeah, of course. But maybe <laughs> maybe it'll finally end the end the whole uh, a controversial thing, maybe, so they can move on or something. Or, or, That's what or, I was thinking. What? Or maybe just give uh, AJ a match with Vicky, you know, and then if she wins, she gets her job back or something. I don't know. At TLC. That's true. I could, <laughs> that's not too bad. Yeah, I could I could see that. That's not a bad uh, scenario to go with. But you know what would be kind of cool if if Raw really takes this three hours thing seriously. You know what they should do is like start doing some th some more bring back the theme nights. Like bring back the King of oh, Ring, yeah. bring back the King of Ring tournament. Do something that they've never done before yet on Monday Night Raw. Have an elimination chamber night. They got three wow. hours. You could do it. Uh, maybe make the if it's an elimination chamber match. Maybe make you know it like for this that one night only. Maybe commercial free like they did before in the past. The, th the whole three right. hours or at least the elimination chamber matches at least have two two. No, or I don't three. see them doing that just because it's like almost like doing a money in the bank. Like I could see them doing a cage, and I know the Royal Rumble kind of started off on free TV first. Yeah. before you know went to the pay per view, but I think that would be kind of one of their bread and butter pay per views that they don't want to like. Well, I you know, know that, but, but that what day. I'm what I'm saying though is like. Like uh, they could do like it doesn't have to be every year or every week or whatever. I'm just saying like if like the elimination thing would be kind of cool because they've never done it on Raw or SmackDown before. 
and it would be like give back to the fans. They could have it. It doesn't have, just necessarily have to be for the WWE Championship or the World Championship. Uh, you know, it could be for the Intercontinental Title. It could be like a, a number one contender match or something like that. Like the winner gets a number one contender or will be number one contender. Just to have a, well, a you me. know. Oh man, I'm sorry. Just just to have like an elimination chamber match on Raw, I think would be kind of cool. I don't know. <laughs> well, I was thinking, you know, like kind of taking both of your ideas almost and combining it into one, or well, except for you know the cage part. But I was thinking like kind of what you're touching on. Like, I know they've done that with King of the Ring, but I wish they would actually, I feel like they would only do, like, a match here and there. But what would be cool is to actually do, like, maybe a pay-per-view that they don't really do anymore, like a bragging rights or King of the Ring, but actually make that, like, a one-night oh, sure. uh, for, like, a Raw episode. Kind of like what you're saying, because you're right, they have three hours, that's the normal length for the pay-per-views, but treat one special Raw as a similar pay-per-view type atmosphere where you've got, like, a bragging rights for one whole night, or you've got... Um, you know, King of the Ring, but it takes place over the whole night, just not like a match or two, and then yeah. that's it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, have the focus be on one thing, you know, and, and then see where they can go with it. Because I, I remember when they did the King of the Ring the, back in 2010, and I thought that was pretty good. I mean, even having Sheamus win, I thought that was all right. But, I mean, it's just mm-hmm. that they need, to, they need to figure out something, because I just think that WWE is just kind of losing its touch. No, not just because of oh, three totally. hours. Not just because of three hours. They kind of been losing their touch for a while, and I think. Oh like, yeah, I agree. With I that. think the reason why mostly is just because they have really no competition. Even though the TNA is still You're there, but right. but if TNA would have stuck with the Monday night Monday night stuff, and and they could have brought back the Monday Night Wars Part Two, like they were describing, then I think it would be more interesting. But now it's just I don't yeah. know. <laughs> it almost reminds me of like the difference between dating and marriage. It's like when you're dating, you're doing everything, you're getting flowers. Oh yeah, I remember all your birthdays and, and <laughs> yeah. our uh, boyfriend girlfriend anniversary, and I got you this. And I love you, and you're like everything's so hot and passionate. You get married after a couple years, you're like, now when did we get married again? What's our anniversary? Because <laughs> and, and it's a similar analogy with WWE. It's like when you have the competition, you were trying really hard. When you don't have much, you kind of rest on your laurels a little, and there there isn't. Much. And I also think what hurt them too was. I mean, from a business standpoint, I understand you want to diversify, go into different avenues. The only negative with that is that, it, again, kind of made the, the main bread and butter product that is wrestling, you know, suffer. And I feel like that kind of went downhill a little when Vince pretty much said, well, we're not really a wrestling company. We're entertainment. And then they were focusing a lot on movies and films that really didn't do much for yeah. them and, and kind of hurt them in the long run in some <laughs> yeah. ways. That's for sure. I don't know. They they try to make wrestlers into actors, and some of the wrestlers like like I could see Triple H being an actor. I mean, I thought he did pretty mm-hmm. good in the cha- in the chaperone. That Inside Out movie was kind of stupid, but uh, I don't know. It's, it's I, I lost. It was like no to me. It had no plot really. But like uh, a John Cena in the Marine, I thought was good. But but not having Ted DiBiase or the Miz. I mean, come on. I mean, not every wrestler <laughs> can act. You know. These, well, that's true. These people went into wrestling because they wanted to wrestle. That's all they wanted to do. They didn't. If you like having like, uh, well, I mean, they did the movie with Kane. If you like having Ryback having a movie now, <laughs> call <laughs> Feed Me More. Yeah. Be a whole, yeah. Hopefully, whole thing about going to the Golden Corral. But yeah, Feed Me More would be the movie. <laughs> <laughs> and then I wonder, like, if you know, sometimes they sell a little DVD pack that comes with a little bonus. I wonder if it'd come with like a little uh, that thing of. That's a abysmal, maybe. Yeah. A little too much. Oh, jeez. Got, got to take care of business somehow. <laughs> well, what type of uh, indie pr- uh, promotions do you guys have up there? Are you aware well, of uh, any of the ones near you? Y- you see, that the, the problem with up here in northern Minnesota is uh, the one that you saw in the video is, like, the really the only one that ever comes up here. And it's R&R wow. Wrestling. You, you've heard of Rock and Roll Buck Zuma before, before, have you? Yeah. Yeah, he's, he, he's like the AWA uh, he used to wrestle for AWA way back in the day and when it was running and stuff. And he's one of those guys. I mean, he's a great guy. And and uh, you know, I love Buck. He you know he, he became he and I became pretty good friends over the internet and everything. But uh, but I think he's one of those guys in a way that kind of you know he wants to he wants to have the passion for wrestling. But I I don't think he's it's ever going to go like he's never going to be like on TV or anything like that again. You know, like he's one of those right. guys that you know just doesn't know when to lace up the boots, <laughs> or, or just doesn't yeah, know when to yeah, hang him up more or less. <laughs> that, you know, I guess the whole wrestler mentality. Yeah, uh, sometimes. You know, but he's a great, he, uh, but he's a great guy. I mean, I'm not saying he's, I'm not saying he's evil or anything. No, he, he's, he's the best. I just, uh, I, I like the fact that uh, he became friends with one of the guys that work at the local Legion over here in Greenbush, and uh, they've been doing this for like the last six or seven years in a row, and. 
and then they come to Carlston, which is like 20 miles away from where I live for like during the events that they have over there for like summertime and stuff. And so it's it's great. Wow. It's just that we don't really have like I I wish that I lived in Georgia or Florida or New York or somewhere where they had even though they're not territories anymore, but I still consider them territories because there's if there's still independent wrestling going around, uh, you know, it'd be fun to see right. more events. Like like you're lucky because you live in, in Georgia and you live in the, the heart of Georgia, Atlanta. So that's wrestling country right there, you know? Not just with exactly. the history of WCW yeah, not just with the history of WCW or NWA, but just just all over around you you're surrounded by wrestling. So I mean I, I envy you. <laughs> <laughs> I well, really yeah, I mean, and I, even I moved, you know, from North Carolina, and that obviously had a lot as well too. But coming to Georgia, I was like, man, like I did, like I knew we enjoyed wrestling in North Carolina, but it wasn't until I came here because it is, even though, like you said, it's not territorial anymore. It almost feels like it. It's like in a way we have a local flair for even just the town, and then the outskirts of Atlanta. But then you've got Georgia because there's a great uh, website called Georgia Wrestling History. But then the nice thing is, is that. You know, it has sometimes a local feel to it, but then we're on national television, which yeah. is pretty awesome. And, and people can check out the website, anarchy-wrestling.com, and they can look on the television section. And the nice thing is you can see it either in, in some of your towns throughout the country or, you know, if you don't get it in your local area, you can watch it on the Internet where we have, you, know, you can download the, the episode there. Sure. I know in Raleigh, uh, where I left, it's uh, Saturday at 10 p.m. Uh, I think it's the St. Augs uh, cable channel. They can look up wherever that is I don't know the number offhand, but it's always uh, nice. <laughs> so, so now with you moving, uh, living in Atlanta, Georgia, does it feel does it feel different than when you lived in, in Raleigh? I mean, is it a different different vibe for you? Yeah, I think so. I mean, like yes and no. Like uh, you know, Raleigh, it was one of those things where Raleigh you could be like a big fish in a small pond. Here, you're in a pretty big pond, and sometimes you need some water wings. <laughs> so it's it's nice though because there's more opportunities. And obviously, if I stayed in North Carolina, I would have never got the opportunity with Anarchy. So I'm definitely yeah, glad to be here. Um, it's really cool to go from, like, kind of a small, smaller city to then go to a bigger city. But then not have to be, like, I'm just a little bit on the outskirts. I'm pretty close to Atlanta, but not, like, I'm not having to be in downtown, which is nice because I couldn't imagine dealing with that kind of traffic on a daily basis. <laughs> well, since you're, since you're living in Atlanta, Georgia, and I don't want to be too controversial, but I want to bring up a subject that I think you might know where I'm going with this. It's a Georgia-related, but... Uh, there's one wrestler that they, they don't talk about no more uh, that uh, supposedly, and I, I don't personally believe this, I don't think he would be capable of doing this, but then again, maybe he could, then, uh, the legendary Chris Benoit. What do you think about that whole scenario about way back, because I believe this was in 2007 uh, where he uh, supposedly it was a suicide, homicide, or whatever, and since you live around Atlanta now, uh, what do you think about the whole Chris Benoit thing? Yeah, I wouldn't actually go find the house. I mean, it, when I saw it on TV, I was like, man, uh, the, the wrestlers definitely do pretty well for themselves, apparently, yeah. because a lot of them have really nice houses, <laughs> and it was a, definitely a nice house. It's definitely a tragedy, very sad. I mean, I, especially now, you know, just as you get older and then you're, um, you know, performing for kids and you have one of your own, you definitely, like, look at it from different perspectives than before you would hear something on the news, but... And, and maybe you're affected a little, but not as much as you would when you really think about having a family. Yeah. And then you just think of, you know, what he did in, in one full swoop. And I guess the one negative, I mean, it, it, it's just like with anything else, whether it had been wrestling or not, you know, a tragedy still the tragedy. I just hate how a lot of the media sometimes, you know, oh, they, that's what the angle they want to go with. When it involves wrestling, oh, we've got to talk something negative about it, whether it's steroids, sure. it's about the, the murder-suicide. It's, you know, and it never really seems to get much press. It's either always off that look down upon or or ridiculed when there's something negative and that really has always kind of irked me over the years so do you do you believe in your heart that he actually did it or do you think he didn't do it well i know you got some on the internet always say that uh, you know they think kevin sullivan which you know <laughs> is a bit of a stretch it's always interesting i was like that'd be one heck of a pay-per-view headline somehow yeah. or another i was like i'd be would have been surprised if vince had pulled something off like that I and mean, if a man can you know, turn somehow a Jerry Lawler heart attack into a storyline, and I, yeah, I, then nothing this man won't do. But obviously, yeah, I, I believe it, it's probably what it was. Obviously, I have no proof. But yeah, that's just, I guess, my thought. It's one of those cases that, to me, and to, I'm sure most of everybody, that has never really been solved. You know, I mean, it really because you know, I mean, I, I would have thought he would have had some type of uh, security system 
you know, like video equipment or something like that, you know, since he had a big old mansion and stuff. And that would have been good proof right there, but when they didn't show nothing like that, it makes you wonder. It's like, what are they trying to hide? And then they pinpoint it to think that he actually would do something like this. And I personally don't think that he did, just because I just can't see him, you know, or any wrestler. I don't care how big you are, and I don't care, you know, what, you know, I've never taken steroids, obviously, because I, I don't know much about him, but I don't think that. I, I, did, I don't think he would be the type of person to do that. It'd be like saying, like, The Undertaker or Rey Mysterio will go kill his children or whatever. No, I just, I don't know. It's just, I just wanted to bring that up because since you live around the Georgia area, I didn't want to bring this, make this interview or whatever a little negative. I just thought, well, I'd like to get your opinion to see what you thought about that. <laughs> yeah, and hopefully it's a situation where if, if, you know, it wasn't what it was ruled, I hope that, you know, obviously somehow or another something will come out to clear clear the name if there is something like that out there it would certainly you know be good i think for everyone involved i mean obviously it still doesn't negate the tragedy but it definitely would at least help with someone's name you would imagine yeah and i guess you know time will tell things that crazier things keep happening in yeah. this world but you just never know definitely seems like that so before i i let you go here uh i want to ask you one last question and maybe it can be a two-part question one for me one for you uh um, everybody that you've ever watched wrestle from the time that you were a little kid or, or when you first knew what wrestling was to now, who is the one wrestler to you that if you could meet, if you haven't met him or if you could meet him, uh, who is the one wrestler that uh, made you love pro wrestling? Wow. Well, you know, it's funny. I have to, it's funny. I've got a chance to meet both of them. I would, I would have probably said Ric Flair's thing like growing up because um, I was during that era, but I got a chance to meet both of them, and, and, and Ric Flair several times. Okay. But that would probably be, I was trying to think in my head, like, who have <laughs> I not had a chance to really yeah. meet yet um, that I would like. I know I would like to encounter probably AJ. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but now that I've gotten older, it's not so much athletic ability as it would be just, hey, I want a nice little hug. Yeah. <laughs> so Ric Flair and Sting would be your picks, kind of, of, of the two people that really influenced you to love wrestling. Yeah, I mean, they really, and of course, you know, Ric Flair was on top of, of, you know, almost every pay-per-view, so even though I, it was funny, I couldn't stand him at the time, and as time went on, you know, I wound up like, man, he's really good at what he did, and, um, and, and you know, one of my favorite pay-per-views, July 7th, 1990, Great American Bash, uh, Sting Flair, that was definitely one of my top uh, favorites, okay. and uh, as with, uh, the Great American Bash 89, so both censored him and those focal point of a match, and and it's just hard not to really appreciate that. So I'm definitely always been more of an NWA guy back in the day. Even more, the old, like, more the uh, old school WWF type of at the time okay. too. More the old school type of person. Yeah. Really. So, okay. Well, that's no problem. I'm old school too. Hey, I might only be 29 years old, but you know, I I I, I believe in the old school just like I do with music and movies. I mean, some of these things that you see nowadays, you know, absolutely are is horrible. Sometimes it's good, sometimes it's not. But for me, I think for yeah. for the re the one wrestler that I could say, there's there's probably a big list, probably a top fifty list of wrestlers that I could name off. But the one wrestler that does it for me, you know, whether it's controversial or not, I really don't care. Bret the Hitman Hart. I've always been a big Bret Hart oh, wow. fan. That's a good one. I've always been a big Bret Hart fan. I mean, I think he, when it comes to somebody who's a real wrestler, you know, someone who's been, who's done it all, you know, CM Punk can say that he's done it all, but nah, it's Bret Hart. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and he called him out like a week ago or something. Yeah, and yeah. Out there too, I say, ago. yeah, that must make me the yeah, best I, it was the best it was ever. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> His little promo. Yeah, I know, man. I love that. Yeah, no, it was, it was actually funny because I got a chance to meet him at a show they did at the Georgia Dome uh, with WCW was there one time, and I happened to go in an elevator, took the wrong floor, and wound up getting off on the bottom floor where they were actually all kind of mingling around. Oh, okay. But then before I got the heck out of there, before I got kicked out, I got to meet him. And that was one that I figured would always be really hard, probably, to get to meet someone like that. Yeah. So I, I would probably, that's another thing. I, when I was also growing up, I always wanted to meet the announcers because, obviously, that was my sure. my thing that I followed and which eventually became into. And I also, um, you know, would love to have met, like, I got a chance to meet Eric Bischoff, but Vince would be cool, Vince McMahon. Oh, yeah. Some of the people that would be, that really don't get to do autograph signings and they're hard to meet, like, at a show. Those are the people that would be kind of cool to get to talk to because they're probably so hard to meet. So uh, I guess I got one more question for you, I guess, <laughs> that I just came up on the top of my head. Uh, do you see yourself working for WWE or TNA one day? Yeah, I mean, you definitely can never say never. I'm, I mean, I'm really very happy where I'm at right now. Obviously, okay. you know, if, they, if there was interest shown, then 
then that would definitely be something uh, we would go down that route. But, I mean, who knows? I, guess I, I really, my dream growing up was to do play-by-play -play for WCW in sure. Atlanta. And obviously that went out of business. And then it's kind of ironic because I'm doing really my dream now, which is play-by-play -play for a, a thing that was originally the NWA. Yeah. And it just blows my mind that someone, you know, you have a dream. doesn't mean you'll always get 100% exactly the way you want it. But to be very close to what I dreamed is amazing. Sure. Well, I, I, you know, I tell you, I mean, I, I, I feel the same way. I mean, I'm not, you know, I'm doing my dream as far as, you know, when it comes to interviews and stuff, but as far as my dream, my paid dream, I mean, I'm not uh, I'm not getting paid yet uh, to do all this stuff. This is just stuff I do for free, but this is just something that I do for the for the sake of fun for right now. But uh, I don't know. I mean, uh, dreams, dreams definitely can come, you know, and... and uh, whether it's uh, something you've always wanted to do as far as a career or a place you've always wanted to go visit. You know, I, I went and visited uh, Astoria, Oregon a couple times, once in 2008 and once in 2012 or this year uh, because of the Goonies and everything that was filmed there. Uh, so I just, I guess you just never know what uh, what life can give you. <laughs> yes, exactly. You're exactly right. And I let that be an encouragement to everyone listening. And like before it, a lot of people, you know, have a dream, but they're afraid to try yeah. because being shot down. But I always feel like I'd rather get shot down and know I did my best and it's out of my control than to sure. just sit and wonder if I had done it. All right. Well, Timmy D, I, I appreciate you. Uh, let me uh, talk to you for a little while. This wasn't really much. Yeah, thanks for having me. On. This wasn't really an interview. This was more or less uh, us talking about pro wrestling because since I've interviewed you once before, but that for some reason. Some of the interviews that I did way back when I was on the radio, I put them on like a like a site or a website, and then all of a sudden that website shut down, and so I lost like a good majority of the interviews that I did back in the day. Uh, so <laughs> it's nice it's nice to talk to you again after all this time. <laughs> yeah, I agree. It's nice to talk to you as well. I really appreciate you having me on, and I appreciate Mike Massey because with him getting on and me noticing and, and catching the attention, I like the. You know, wish him a little shout out as well, and all the people at Anarchy. So, sure. so definitely, I, I, much success to you as well. Well, thank you, and I appreciate you taking the time to let me do this with you. And uh, hey, you know, maybe we'll we'll speak again in the future since we're friends on Facebook. <laughs> yeah, that sounds great, and I hope you have a great you know time when you go to the TNA show. Oh out. yeah, I'm gonna try to get I'm gonna try to get some interviews. We'll see what happens. <laughs> well, awesome. Well, I, I look forward to it. I'll be I'll be keeping an eye out. So if you do, I'll be definitely checking it out. Excellent. All right, man. Well, thanks for your time, right, and uh, we appreciate See you later.